Now, I know verses can be taken out of context. Yeah, you could have just stopped after that, right? Because that's exactly what you did. All things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Any opposite view, any a point of disagreement, you know, they demand allegiance. Guys, there is no neutrality. There is no neutrality. You will either serve Christ or you will bow the knee to them. You will bow the knee to them. Well, we have a few videos to get on because you guys may have remembered Rose Mentoya. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. You guys, does that name sound familiar to some of you? Well, if it doesn't sound familiar, the act of what I'm about to describe for many of you will sound familiar. This was the man who is dressing up as a, a female who went at the White House and went nude on the front lawn of the White House. That, that's who it is, Rose Montoya. Just in case some of you are not familiar with Rose Montoya, let me share my screen with you. Rose Montoya, trans, yeah, trans um, activist, TikTok educator, right? Um, you know, one of the things that was interesting, and, and of course, this is Wikipedia, but one of the things I just saw just from scrolling on here is that her father, his father, is a pastor at a church and very curious to know their theology, right? But interesting. So he has a religious background. And so that's what makes this clip very interesting. Yeah, yeah Kiana, this is the dude who's pretending to be a lady, right? He's gotten the surgery, right? The cosmetic stuff to look more feminine, right? Um, but he did a video, shout out to Woke Preacher Clips for uh, showing this, where he tried to make an argument that the Bible teaches trans is okay. You guys ready for this? <laughs> um, very strange argument, but let's, what we're going to do, we're going to play the video and then we're going to get into a commentary on the issue. There are a few ver verses in the Bible that may point to affirming gender transitions. Galatians 3, 26 through 28 states that in Christ, we are all one. We are all children of God. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all alone in Jesus Christ. Now, I know verses can be taken out of context, but when people are trying to argue against queer identities, they have to take the Bible very, very seriously and literally. And if we're taking this verse literally, Jesus doesn't care about your gender. Jesus doesn't care male, female, trans, agender, bigender. It doesn't matter. The Bible also teaches people not to lie. This is my identity is my own. I'm the only one that can tell you who I am. I am the person that defines myself. I have done a lot of soul searching and this is the thing that makes the most sense. I don't want to lie. Do not force me to lie because that is a sin in the Bible. Wow, right? So what do you guys think about that? Is that proper exegesis? <laughs> Obviously not. And there are some major contradictions in that um, in the video. What we're going to do is we're going to play it back. And we're going to respond to some of these absurd claims that he is making and show you how. One, like, like I said, he's contradicting himself in the Bible. So let's play this back and get into it. There are a few ver verses in the Bible that may point to affirming gender transitions. There is absolutely no Bible verse which affirms uh, trans ideology, LGBT stuff at all, not at all, not one. And guess what? The verse that he brings up <laughs> isn't saying that. And we're going to show that very clearly. Galatians three twenty six through 28 states that in Christ, we are all one. 
We are all children of God. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all alone in Jesus Christ. Um, well, didn't cite the verse correctly, but that's okay. Many people make mistakes. That's all right. Let me quote the verse. Um, Galatians 3, 20, for in Christ Jesus, you are all, let, let me, yeah, let me actually uh, start above that. Let me start at verse 26. He meant 28, but it says, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For, what's the reasoning? For you, that is, whoever you are, are all one in Christ. It doesn't say alone, but that's fine. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Let me ask her, do Jews and Greeks no longer exist now? Obviously, that would be absurd. The point of this verse is speaking of unity in Christ, there is no one greater, more superior. This is the verse on unity in the body. We are all in the family of God. Hence, verse 26, right? You're all sons of God through faith. This is just pure eisegesis to say, well, this is just saying you can be trans now. That's absurd reasoning. Paul wouldn't have known what you were talking about. Like, that's not what I meant. Sir, Paul would have said something similar to this. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Absolutely would have been stated to you. Again, this is being the twisting of scriptures. But we will continue on with this. Now, I know verses can be taken out of context. Yeah, you could have just stopped after that, right? Because that's exactly what you did. You took a verse out of context that had no grounding for what you claimed it claimed, asserted, and took it out of context to support your uh, ideology, your twisting of scripture. Yes, that was a taking out of context. But when people are trying to argue against queer identities, they have to take the Bible very, very seriously. Now, I think he was all about to cuss. <laughs> I think he was, let's play it back and see that a little bit closer. Very, very, hold on, hold on. You against queer identities, they have to take the Bible very, very seriously. Now, he said the Bible very, very serious, and it goes on to say literal. Well, yes, we take the Bible serious, and we also take the Bible literal according to its genre. Yes, we take the Bible serious when God says, I created them male and female, right? We take the Bible serious when the Bible gives gender specific roles. Yes, we do, but you don't. So you go to a verse in Galatians 3, not about, um, not about uh, the uh, trans ideology. The, the context has nothing to do with gender specific roles and how a man can become female, a female become man if they really want to. And if and if they identify as this, then they, it's all OK. Galatians has nothing to do with that. Nothing. Yes, you're telling us what you really think. You don't take the Bible serious. <laughs> yeah, that spoke a lot about you. Right and literally and if we're taking this verse literally jesus doesn't care about your gender jesus doesn't care male female trans a gender by gender negative matter of fact you would need to prove how any of those other genders other than male and female exist at all show me pansexual and guys i, I hear the most absurd absurd uh gender names now that exist Right. You know, what? there's this funny uh, video, funny uh, <laughs> post where it's like, you know, there are more. It's a shirt that says there are more than two genders. And then under it in the Amazon link, it just says male and female. <laughs> to me, that's hilarious. Right. Because reality, society shows you this position is absurd to take. Right. Um, she you can't find one place where 
anything other than male and female. Not one. And to try to put this into the Bible, right, just shows the level of perversion these guys will go to, where even they will go to the Bible, God's word itself, to show, to try to make some kind of case where, um, what to, to, to deny essentially what God said about male and female. Again, leave your perversion to yourself. Don't drag God into it. But we'll continue. What else you got to say, man? It doesn't matter. The Bible also teaches people not to lie. This Yet you are lying on behalf of God, saying he said something that he did not. Is my identity is my own. I'm the only one that can tell you who I am. That's a lie. You know who else can tell you? You know who else can tell you who you are? God did. God can. And he, God did. God is the one who can tell you who you are. You know, we are not the ultimate arbitrators or deciders or authority, even about us as individuals. God created you. He created male, female. Therefore, as creator, he is the one who determines who you really are. You want to know who you really are? You're confused. I can sympathize with that. I could understand. To some level, we all are confused about ourselves sexually and physically. You know, there's all some confusion. We've been tainted by sin. So I understand. Here's what I tell you. Go to Christ. Submit to him with all your confusion, all your understand misunderstandings. And submit to what he says about you. And he says, I have created you male, not female. And submit to that. I am the person that defines myself. I have done a lot of soul searching, and this is the thing that makes the most sense. I don't want to lie. Do not force me to lie, because that is a sin in the Bible. You are lying. And yes, lying is a sin. But you are the one committing the sin by lying on God's word, by saying Galatians 3.28 teaches that, which it does not. It does not teach the trans ideology. And no, and, and you know, I just thought of this. It makes no sense. Wait a second. If there's no longer male nor female, then what why are you trying to transition as a female? It, that that verse doesn't actually help you. It actually contradicts what you're just saying. Um again, the Bible says uh to be modest, yet you went to the White House showing yourself naked. Again, I don't advise anyone to look up that disturbing video, but it was all on my Twitter feed. Just disturbing and disgusting that any person who claims to be a person of God would go out and do the thing God says not to do. But again, you're the one lying on behalf of God. Yo, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you heard here today, why don't you go and leave me a like? Subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly content, lives, interacting, exposing false teachers, showing you my theological beliefs and what I believe the Bible teaches. So if you're here for that, go on and join us. Yeah.